about 2,500,000 books, so it was remarkably easy. I can look up such as Mediterranean cooking, and I find 57 to eBay, from E-Trade to Excite. The companies that know the internet best use Oracle for e-business. Where will you find a world of ideas for your child? Only at eToys. From Barbie to Brio to Swimways. eToys. Where great ideas come to you. You've got this huge customer. They're so huge, sometimes they don't even know when you receive the shipment. Whose problem is this? Yours. That's why you should UPS. It's only UPS Ultra. Get your signature on top of it. UPS Online. Your customer's actual signature. When they say we never got it. And they don't need to get it, but I don't have to ride. UPS. What you saw just now were the 90s and the early 2000s commercial for dot com businesses or the mini online shopping companies. So welcome to the era of dot com bubble where if you started a company with the adoption of internet, we are very likely to get a lot of funding and a high evaluation. To put things into perspective, let's take the example of Priceline which still exists today. Jay Walker an entrepreneur with brilliant solution to a serious problem. During the early days, 500,000 aeroplane seats went unsold every day. Priceline provided these seats to online consumers who could name their own price. In this way, consumers obtained cheaper tickets and airlines sold their excess inventory. Market inefficiencies were worked out and Priceline earned a share for facilitating the process. Your typical win-win-win that only the internet could provide. Priceline was a dot-com overnight success, rising from 50 people to more than 300 in its first 7 months of operation and selling more than 100,000 plane tickets. It was selling more than 1,000 tickets every day by the end of 1999. It attempted to grow into hotel reservations, vehicle rentals and house mortgages with Walker's objective of taking the Priceline concept to every eligible market. In March 1999, Priceline went public at $16 a share. On its first day of trading, went up to $88 before settling at $69. This gave Priceline a total market capitalization of $9.8 billion, the largest first day valuation of an internet company to that date. Few investors were concerned that in its first few quarters in business, Priceline racked up losses of $142.5 million or that it had to buy tickets on the open market at cost to fulfill customers' low ball bids, losing on average $30 on every ticket it sold or that Priceline customers often ended up paying more than at auction than they could have paid through a traditional travel agent. Investors were more interested in grabbing a piece of company that was going to change the future of business. So by 1999, losing money was the mark of a successful dot com. A few could lose money as prolifically or creatively as Priceline. Pets.com, eToys, Cosmo.com and UrbanFetch all shared some or all Priceline characteristics. A business plan that promised to change the world. A get big fast strategy to achieve a corner of a specific market. A willingness to sell products at a loss in order to gain that market share. A willingness to spend lavishly on branding and advertising to raise awareness. And a sky high stock market evaluation. It became a running gag or a joke that the dot coms that begin with the great visions of a more efficient way of doing business were almost to a company unprofitable. But many investors were eager to invest at any valuation in any dot com company, especially if it had one of the internet related prefixes or a dot com suffix in its name. The venture investors who sponsored these firms wanted supernova IPOs since that's how they got paid. For venture investors, any IPO meant an exit. 
to spectacular first day pops you saw on dot com stocks when they went public those were the early money cashing out selling their stock to the investing public the dot com bubble was a fantasy period in which many vcs didn't care if a company made a profit because it didn't have to so what is the main cause for the dot com bubble to crash well most startups did not adopt a viable business models such as cash flow generation hence they were overvalued and highly speculative it culminated in a bubble that grew rapidly for several years outrageous valuations were placed on these companies and share prices continued to go up as demand was overwhelming therefore the bursting of the bubble was inevitable and resulted in a market crash which is more conspicuous on the nasdaq stock exchange however there are three main causes for the dot com crash which were one overvaluation of dot com companies as stated above most tech and internet companies that held ipos during the dot com era were highly overvalued due to the increasing demand and a lack of solid valuation models high multipliers were used on tech companies valuation resulting in unrealistic value that were too optimistic two abundance of venture capital money pouring into tech and internet company startup by venture capitalist and other investors was one of the major causes of the dot com bubble in addition cheap funds obtainable through very low interest rates made capital easily accessible it coupled with fewer barriers to acquiring or funding for internet companies led to massive investment in the sector which expanded the bubble even further 3 media frenzy media companies encouraged people to invest in risky tech stocks by peddling overly optimistic expectations on future returns and they get big first mantra business publications such as the wall street journal forbes Bloomberg and many investment analysis publications spurred demand through their media outlets adding fuel to a burning fire and furthering the inflating bubble so how much money was lost in dot com bubble crash by 2002 100 million individual investors had lost 5 trillion dollars in the stock market at the end other internet based companies eventually struggle but survived through the crash and are giants today few of them being microsoft amazon ebay and cisco and currently you can see a similar bubble forming which is the tech bubble a tech bubble refers to pronounced an unsustainable market rise attributed to increased speculation in technology stocks rapid share price growth and high valuation based on standard metrics such as price earnings ratio or price sales ratios normally characterize a tech bubble well only future can tell what will happen to the tech bubble i hope you enjoy this very small case study on dot com crash below i have linked a few articles regarding the same if you wish to have a higher understanding please go check it out until then goodbye